This is the new Elgato face cam. It's got some great features and great software, but how does it stack up against the current market leaders like the Logitech C920, the C922, and the Brio? And is this our top pick for best webcam in 2022? This is our full review to help you decide if the face cam is the best webcam for your Mac or PC right now. Now, webcams are kind of in this weird area of tech. Things like smartphones and cameras improve in huge leaps and bounds every year, while the whole webcam space seems to be stuck like 10 years ago. I mean, literally two of the best selling webcams that still top a lot of the review charts are the Logitech C920 and C922, which were originally released back in 2012 and 2016. And even with some of the newer webcams like the 4K Logitech Brio, they've got relatively minor improvements and the software experience is completely non-existent or terrible. So this is what Elgato is promising to change with the face cam, pairing their totally new hardware with a really well thought out software package designed to give you much more granular control over your webcam. Now, Elgato actually sent this to us about six months ago, and it's taken until now for me to really think that this is at the point where it is worth a review. Initially, in my tests, I had so many issues. There was glitches, there was weird stuff happening while I was live. So I ended up putting it back in the box and sitting it on the shelf until they had some firmware updates and things that would fix the issues that I was having. Now, since then, they have released a few firmware updates which have fixed all the problems, and I now think it's a really good option, hence the video. So let's dive into everything you need to know. Some quick specs to start with, I've also included the Logitech Brio and the Logitech C922 just for comparison. So the Elgato face cam is a 1080p webcam capable of 60 frames per second. So yes, it's not a 4K webcam like the Logitech Brio. It's got an 82 degree field of view, so a little bit wider than the C920, but the Brio does have its three different settings, 65, 78, and 90 degrees. So the field of view is quite a bit wider on the Brio. Now, while most webcams have auto focus built in, it's usually not that good. And you can see it pulsing and hunting. So to fix this, Elgato instead have gone with a fixed focus lens. So the focus is totally locked. So that means that everything that is at least 12 inches up to 47 inches, anything in that range, the distance away from the webcam is going to automatically be in focus. Anything outside of those is not. And they also chose to go with a 24 millimeter equivalent fixed lens, which is a really popular lens choice when it comes to live streaming. But as it is a fixed lens, as with most webcams, there is no optical zoom, but you can zoom in and reframe your shot digitally using the software. But yes, there will be some quality loss. Now comparing that to the Logitech Brio, which does state it's got a five times zoom, that's digital zoom as well, it's not optical, but given that it's capable of 4K video at 1080p, if you did wanna zoom in, you're really not gonna lose too much quality. Elgato also decided to remove the microphone for this webcam, so there is no built-in microphone. And in my opinion, don't think that's a deal breaker. Not many people I know use the built-in microphone in their webcams they're usually terrible. And for connectivity to your computer, there is a USB-C port on the back, same as the Brio, and it does come with a USB-C to USB-A cable. Now, I think the camera itself looks awesome, but when you pick it up, it definitely feels lighter than you would think, and it definitely feels kind of cheap and plasticky, but I don't think that's a real problem. Now, the mount on the bottom is pretty good. It's gonna fit onto most screens as it opens up pretty wide. And one thing it doesn't have that would be nice that really no other webcam has anyway is the ability to tilt the webcam left and right. So you can really frame your shot up the way that you would like. But it's really not a deal breaker because the base itself removes and there is a standard tripod mounting thread on the bottom. So you can always mount it on a ball head if you wanted that flexibility. Now it does come with a lens cover as well, but it's not attached to the camera itself. So if you're someone who's taking the lens cover on and off and you're putting it down somewhere, there is a chance you could lose it. I'm speaking from experience. But there's still a few really big features with this webcam that we're gonna jump into. But let's take a look at what it looks like. So this is what the Elgato face cam looks like. Now I have tweaked the settings here to make it look like this. This isn't the automatic settings, but we'll jump over now to the camera hub and let's take a look at what you can control. So at the top here, you've got the zoom. Obviously we can zoom in and out on our shot here. It is gonna lose quality, but 
at a pinch, you could do it. You've got your contrast, your saturation, and your sharpness. Sharpness is one I normally like to take down. I think the default is two. And you can see how much detail there is in my beard here. So let's go back to one. Exposure, I've got on manual. This is what I love about this, is that you're getting DSLR-like settings. Like the ability to control your shutter speed and your ISO here is huge. No other webcam gives you control like this. So because I'm in Australia, I've set the shutter speed to one over 50 to remove any flickering from any lights. And then I can adjust the brightness of my shot with the ISO here up and down. We can also adjust the white balance, but instead of just having an arbitrary slider, uh, we actually have Kelvin rating here, which is normally what you would be using to adjust your white balance on a regular camera. And you can see down the bottom here, we've got noise reduction. So I currently have that off. If I turn it on, you can see it removes some of the digital noise or grain from the darker areas of the shot. Uh, so you can see on my shirt here, if I turn it back on, that you get a bit more detail, a bit more grain in there. So I love that you have the ability in here to dial everything in and to really lock everything down. But one of the biggest features that I absolutely love, this is a standout for this camera, is that you can then come up the top here and hit save. And it's not just gonna save them to your computer. It's actually saving and writing these settings to the camera itself. Meaning that if you unplug the camera, put it into a different USB port or even into a different computer, it's gonna save these settings here as the new default for this camera. Now to show you what this looks like straight out of the box without any settings applied, if I come over here to the settings and I go restore factory defaults, it's gonna go through and do its thing. And this is what it looks like straight out of the box. But you can see the overall look, it's not bad. I think I look a little pink or a little orange in this, uh, which is where customizing up these settings and tweaking the brightness and things is going to allow you to fully control what the image looks like. Quick comparison again with the Elgato settings adjusted. This is the Elgato and then this one here is the Logitech Brio. Now in all fairness, I've done nothing here with Logitech Brio and up until very recently, their software was absolute trash. So now if I open up the Logitech software, I'll show you what you can do in there really quickly too. Again, this is the Logitech Brio camera that you're seeing now and this is the Logitune software. So we can adjust the zoom at the top here. We can also adjust the field of view. So we've got 90 degrees, 78. So this is much closer to what you're getting on the face cam. And then you've also got a 65 option in here too. Now you can see here, it's still really clear. It's still really crisp. Yeah, it doesn't seem to cope as well with the details low light, but it's still not that bad. If we scroll down further, we can turn on or off the autofocus. Now this is something that I definitely recommend you're gonna do because the autofocus here is terrible. But if we go over to color adjustments, there are some really bad presets and things that are built in here. Uh, bright blossom for us, these are terrible. But if I go back to original and then to adjustments, then in here is where we can dial it in a little bit further. So it's good that we've got some settings, but this is nothing like what you have access to inside of Elgato's features. And again, this is what it looks like on default. You can see even just the slightest movement and it's totally changing the light in the shot. So here is another side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we've got the Logitech Brio, then we've got the Logitech C922 in the middle, and then the the third one on the right is the face cam. Let me know your thoughts, which one you think is the best camera down in the comments. Now in terms of pricing, the Elgato face cam is currently selling for $199.99. So it's definitely not on the cheaper end of things. There are much cheaper webcams out there, but I do think with the amount of features and controls and everything you're getting here and how well it works low light, it is a pretty good option. Now for comparison, the Logitech Brio 4K is currently selling for around $160 and the Logitech C922 I've seen as cheap as $70 but the C922 comparing it to the other two, I really don't think it's a great option. But overall, I think the Elgato face cam is an amazing webcam and a really great option. I really like the low light capabilities of the face cam and just how awesome the software is. As someone who loves to dive in and dial everything down, it is so awesome that you've got all of those settings in there. But even better is how you can just save them to your webcam so you don't need to dial them in. You can spend the time to do it once for your setup and then just save it there so you're good to go. After having that, it's actually a big annoyance for me when I do use the Logitech Brio that I have to dial it in and one day it could be looking awesome. And you come back in the next day, plug it into a different port and it thinks it's a completely new webcam. So it's lost all of its settings and everything. So being able to save everything to the camera itself with the face cam is huge. 
And with the Brio, it is a noticeably sharper, clearer image. And it's probably because of the 4K capability. So even if you're using it at 1080, it is still sharper and clearer than the Elgato face cam. But it's also something that unless you're comparing them side by side, you're probably not gonna know the difference. But I also like how the Brio looks just with auto settings. For the most part, it does a really good job without even the need to dive in and make adjustments. But the autofocus, I don't think is good. And that is something that I'm normally turning off. So I'm a big fan of the Elgato, how it does have the fixed focus too. So rounding this out, if I had to pick one overall winner and which webcam I'm gonna to continue to use from here on in as my primary webcam, it is gonna to go to the Elgato face cam. I personally think for how I use webcams and for my setup here in a not overly bright room, that that is the best option for me. But also I just love that I can set it up once and know that my settings are all saved to the camera itself so I don't have to set it up every single time. So now that you've got your webcam sorted, if you wanna know how to get the most out of your webcam, the highest quality and the best recording or live streaming, then check out the video linked on screen and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.